really wish I wasn't so polite because I would really just like to just say all those actual things. You're not always polite. Beth learn. Rude. Okay. Welcome to Fit to Be Radio. Slip on your minimal sneakers, notch your headphones into your ears, tuck your smartphone into your pocket, and take us along for a walk while we talk. Or just grab a cup of your favorite drink and get on the floor and stretch a bit while we bring you all things fitness, core, and diastases recti related. <laughs> wow. To fit, hey, what do we call this, Beth? Fit to Be Radio. <laughs> right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Bakey, and I'm here on Fit to Be Radio, and I am with Beth Learn. She is the founder of Fit to Be Studio, and she is a super fitness guru of all types. Uh, and things, including running, which we're talking about today, even though she's not a runner, she knows a lot about it. And we thought we get a lot of questions about running and health and fitness and is it safe and how to do it and all these different things. So we thought on this podcast, we would dig into running, which is, I don't know, is it the most popular sport in America? Well, I think I think people want to do it because they think it'll burn the most calories. So it's a, it's an activity that gets a lot of attention, and most people will try it and do it at some point in their life. Yeah. So probably. Yeah. Um, walking, walking, weightlifting, running. <laughs> so walking is the most weightlift. Really, weightlifting. Oh no, <laughs> no, no! Hold on, I'm reading this wrong. Yeah. No, running is the most popular. Yep. By yep. Long ways. So and then weightlifting and then walking, which is interesting because walking is super good for you. It should be the number one, actually. Yes, I am a walker. I'm a race walker. Um, I'm on a competitive race walking team. Have done Portland to Coast for 10 years. Yeah. On a placing team. It's pretty fun. I am not a runner, but I do get a lot of questions about running and I did do track and field when I played soccer and I ran cross country in high school. So I know just enough to know enough yeah. to help people. So, so real quick, if you're listening to this, she just mentioned the Portland to coast, which is part of the hood to coast relay. If you're not from the Northwest and don't know what that is, just go look it up. It's called the mother of all relays for reasons. Yes. pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Beth does a professional, whatever, walking team on that. And they get whatever. really darn serious. Yes. Actually. Very serious. About walking and so forth. But that's this isn't about walking. We'll do a podcast on walking. This is about <laughs> running. So running. So let's just get into it. What about it? Let's talk about running. Well, um, a lot of people come to me and say, okay, um, look, you do tell me say fitne- fitness, fitness. Um, is running tummy safe? Is running okay to do when I have diastases, when I am leaking, when, um, how, how soon can I return to running after I have a baby? I feel those questions right. all the time. Right. Right. And I think the reason for that is there's a lot of misinformation out there about running and whether or not it's bad for you. And there's also a lot of information out there about running that causes people to injure themselves. Right. Which is really interesting. <laughs> and, a, and again, a lot of people think that it's one of the best exercises because it burns, it can burn a lot of calories. Um, here's a tidbit. Race walking, once you get past speeds of about 12 minute and 30 second miles, um, you burn just as much as if you jog a 10 minute mile. So if you're yeah. not a very fast jogger or runner and you think you could walk at least a 12-ish minute mile, you're going to be burning the same amount of calories and you're going to be doing it in a less impactful, less stressful way on your body. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, spoken like a true walker. I but at the same time, I know there's people that have to run. It's like a compulsion. It's their release. I don't understand that. I fall into the camp of those who share that Facebook meme about if you see me running, you should run too because something is probably bad behind me. <laughs> I am running for my life away from something terrible. Right. Or I'm running toward my kid who is in a crisis. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not a good thing if I, if you see me in an all out run and I can, I can run and I don't leak. And that's a fabulous thing. What we're going to talk about is people who leak when they run and people who are dealing with core dysfunction and yeah, yeah. how you can return to running safely. Yeah. So what, so what would you, so here, here's what I would say about running. First of all, is that, um, 
impact is not necessarily bad for you. Running is not necessarily bad for you. And that uh, a lot of people that don't think they're runners could be runners and they could do it health very good for them. They could do it in a healthy way. But people rarely do that. What they normally do is get out and go from not running at all, not walking, not doing anything, and they go run a whole mile or two miles or three miles. Yeah. They, they run for a full hour. They jog. They might be jogging slow, but they're jogging for a full hour. And then they go, my knees hurt and my shins hurt and I hurt my back and this is bad for me and running's bad for me. And the problem is none of that's true. What's bad is doing something foolish to your body. And right. that applies to running certainly applies to weightlifting that happens all the time it can even apply to race walking like you yeah so i think we should talk about i think one of the things that you're really an expert in is how do i do things from a fitness standpoint smart and safe so let's let's talk about running from that standpoint what do, what what are your thoughts on that <clears throat> progression that is one of my favorite fitness words the principle of progression um and that means that you don't just go from couch potato to running even a mile overnight right um you start small you do baby steps the longer i'm in the fitness industry and i've been in it seriously for over half my life um i have been a certified fitness instructor for 20 years okay So Alberto, not having that. I'm I'm very young. <laughs> uh, is that 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 um the more I know, the more I understand how crucial baby steps are. Yeah, it's really interesting because I think um so I am so some background. I am a runner. I run a lot. Have run a lot. I met my wife running in high school. Best so, love story ever. Seriously. I, it is actually the best. I'm a little biased, but it's the best. Uh, he's not talking about me. For, just, just so y'all, y'all know this, the, this is, we're business partners for fit to be. We're co-founders. Um, me and Chris's wife, Alice have known each other since childhood and Sunday school. Yes. They used to run around and get into trouble when they were little tiny girls. Uh, <laughs> but, but the point is that I, I am a runner. I've done a lot of running. I've done coaching for people running, helping them get going running. And one of the things I think, and this is true for other kinds of fitness as well, but one of the things I think that people injure themselves running, because if you're, you don't even have to be in good shape. If you're reasonably healthy at all, you could be a toll couch, but reasonably healthy. And you decide to run one day and you go to the sporting goods store and you spend $300 on the sweetest outfit and shoes. You're dialed. You get out there and you're in reasonable health and you can easily run a couple miles, two, three miles. You can do it. Yep. And you won't, you won't even necessarily feel if you're in okay health and you're jogging slow, you're not, it's not going to, it's not going to hurt. And it's going to give you a real false sense that you can run that far. And the problem is, is that your body's not used to those steps. If you're running on pavement, it's not used to that impact. It's not used to using those muscles. It's not used to that. And right. you can do it just fine till tomorrow when you try to get out of bed and you can barely move. And I think that's where a lot of people get injuries from because they're like, well, you know, I wanted to get serious. So I only worked out, I only ran for, I only worked out for 40 minutes. Well, mm-hmm. let me tell you, if you're not used to running 40 minutes, that's a, a big jump time. The same would be true. If you go to the gym and you lift weights for 40 minutes. Yeah. You're well, gonna, I, I would what? argue too, that it, like you said, it's not so much that they did the 40 minutes, but what happens when they wake up the next morning and they're sore and most of the world in the fitness industry right now is very much of the mindset that sore the is good. The more sore you are, the better get up and do it again. Do yeah. these 21 day, 30 day, you're banging it out at the gym every day, no matter how sore you are, go back, do it again, do more. And we're not recovering. We're not resting. We're not allowing those muscles to chill for a couple days, doing something different on those days in between. So you have somebody, I'm going to start running. I'm going to run every day. This is my new year's resolution. This is, this is my six week program. And so then they're just tearing down and breaking down and, and not approaching it with any type of progression or plan so, or rest and recovery phase. So talk about what, so when you wake up and your muscles are sore, what is actually medically happening? You didn't 
nourish your body well enough. That is actually what is happening is you didn't fuel your body well enough. You did far more than what your body was prepared for. Soreness is really not indicative of a fabulous workout. It is indicative of a lack of proper fueling and nutrition. It is indicative of pushing past thresholds. Um, and I'm not talking about like, oh, oh, I can feel that I worked out. Oh, that's nice. I'm talking about like, oh, that groaning thing. People, oh, I, just, I can barely lift my arm. Oh, man. And they're walking funny. That's not a good soreness. And yet that seems to be a badge of honor. And that can that also plays not very nicely into diastases and pelvic floor problems because now you're sore. And yep. now your muscles are worn out and when and tired muscles, worn out muscles, sore muscles, they just don't function the same as muscles that have not been thoroughly depleted by a massive, huge, strenuous workout. So then right. you go back in and you ask more of them mm-hmm. and you are taking a exhausted muscle mm-hmm. and then wanting it to do the same thing over it, it's, it's, right. it's going to fail. It's not going to go very well. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that is tough because Pretty much, I mean, there's exceptions, but I would say the majority of all of the information and programming out there is going to encourage you to go until failure. Mm-hmm. And and in fitness and in certain types of workouts, there's a place for going until, until failure. But it's so rare and so specialized when you'd want to do that. The average person that wants to just be healthy and jog mm-hmm. shouldn't ever be thinking about muscle failure. That's absolutely right. It's really dangerous, actually. Right. And, and, and you're right. That is, that is probably one of the key mistakes is we have these muscle magazines and these weight training principles that are really designed for bodybuilders and elite athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that are that are being picked up by the mainstream and really, truly by a lot of ghostwriters who have no fitness qualifications, churning out these articles to create search engine optimization for these massive fitness websites. Right. And they're being digested by the general public yeah. as something that that can be done by anybody, but they're not yeah. including the unsexy lay the foundation, do the basics, start slow. And I'm talking quarter mile. I'm talking you jog a quarter mile and you walk a mile the first day. Like we're talking major baby steps. You do that for a week and you do yoga in between and you only do it every other day. That is what I'm talking about when I say progression. And if you've got diastases, that might, that might even be too much. So it's looking at where you are and building a plan that is tailored to your needs. Yeah. I I think, um, I think one of the tough parts is that people just don't want to go. They don't want to invest. They want, we talk about, I see, it seems like we talk about this in every podcast. They want a pill that just Mm -hmm. solves the problem. And in in this space, what that means is they want a little regimen that gets them up to speed running like the neighbor, you know, in, in Mm -hmm. like one week. And it just doesn't work that way. One of the things that um, I've helped a lot of people realize and understand is there's different kinds of running that can radically improve your running fitness level quickly and easily that are that are sweet and the best one i think is called high intensity interval training and high intensity interval training can be done with high intensity but can also be done at medium and low intensity yeah. What this would look like for a runner starting that's never really done anything that wants to get going, it, it literally what I would tell them, assuming they can walk pretty well and they're they, they can they could jog, mm-hmm. um, that they should start out doing 15 minutes of one minute intervals. And the one minute intervals, so they're just doing 15 of these in a row. They would jog for one minute, and when I say jog, they're starting out. So this is a slow freaking jog. You could probably speed walk faster than this jog. <laughs> jog for one minute and then they walk slowly for one minute and then they jog for one minute and then they walk slowly for one minute. And what that is doing in the body is so much more than you would expect while you're doing that workout. It just can't even can't be measured. Mm-hmm. And this is something that is used by Olympic athletes all the time now. And it's, we've seen a radical shift in running in the last 30 years, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you trained for a marathon. You were running like, multiple marathons a week you know you'd run a marathon distance Leading up to the 25 marathon. 30 miles on a monday then you would do another one on a thursday you do another one on, on like a saturday and now they don't do that 
No. They do interval training for 45 minutes to two hours sometimes. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because you can, you can teach your body things that are much less harsh on your body with some of these other approaches. Yeah. So what I would encourage anyone to do that wants to get into this is don't just go out there and run really hard and injure yourself. Mm-hmm. Do a little homework first. Yeah. Um, we have a really good resource. I'm just going to put this in right now on fit to be that you recorded yeah. and I'm excited to have you do more. Right. Right. Yep. Um, we did an audio <laughs> download and we'll, we'll put a link in here for you so you can go check that out. It's free. It's actually a free resource to people. It is Chris's awesome voice on a track of music. And what I really like about it is that he is not in there yelling at you going, all right, all out, all out, give it your all. But there is this sense of, okay, now you're going to push yourself and you're going to push yourself for the yeah. next couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. What that looks like from day to day that, I mean, what I look like pushing myself yesterday is different than what I'm looking like pushing myself today based on the sleep I got last night, oh, yeah. based on my fuel intake, based on crabby kids that keep interrupting me. And so we, we give it our best and we do our best. And then there's all this room for grace in that training. And right. we want to do more of those. We've gotten really great feedback. Just these audio downloads, you take them out with you when you run. Right. And then you've got this voice in your ear that's encouraging you along the way. Yeah. I, the thing that, that that's cool about that track was basically a little over 30 minutes and it's designed to just be a complete workout, warm up, cool down and it's intervals. Yeah. You can use that running. You can use that walking. I've used it walking. You it's can great. Use biking. You can use it on a rowing machine mm-hmm. because it's about cardiovascular interval training and it's magical for running, but it works in lot. I mean, if you have waterproof headphones, you could use it swimming. <laughs> it's, it's uh-huh. Basically, you know, it's, it's interval training. So mm-hmm. I, I think that it's, it's the, the first one that we released is kind of a medium workout. So you wouldn't want to just go from couch to doing that one, but you know, there's resources out there that let you do that. Um, and that's a cool one. So we'll yeah. I'll put a link on the thing and we can, you can check that out. So, Oh, hey, I want to say one more thing here. Um, Like, I also like about that, that you use a lot of different music types. So, and the music really only stays the same, like for little chunks. So there's a lot of good diversity in it. I know for me, um, I love music and different beats and I crave variety. So like, I cannot handle it when it's the same beat for longer than like three or four minutes. I need something different. So that's really cool that that includes that. Yeah, if you like country music, you, this isn't that. This is no. high energy kind there, of. There's one track that's kind of, kind of get down, jazzy, yeah. jazzy, funky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll, it's a know, good mix. Long term, we'll we'll diversify, do different kinds, but yeah. It, it, so it's fun. I think you should check it out if you want to get in, into running. But mm-hmm. let's talk about um, someone that was a runner. So, so there's so many people like this. Let's talk about somebody that was a runner or wants to be one and they, maybe they've had a baby and mm-hmm. now they're on our website and they're looking or they're on this podcast and they're, they're listening and they're like, okay, I need to get back into that. Or I want to get into that. What's your advice to them? Just the other day, I had somebody post uh, in the forum and go, look, I know, I know you're against running, but I just really miss it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm totally not against running, even though I'm not personally a runner, quote unquote. Um, and I tag some people and I, I pointed her to an article and we'll link that here as well in the podcast. So go take a peek at that um, about how you can make a safe return to running. My biggest piece of advice is, again, that progression and that you need to do some core rehab. When you carry, um, you're carrying over 10 pounds of baby placenta amniotic fluid, whether you have a C-section or a vaginal delivery, um, that is work and load on your pelvic floor and core. Yeah. And those muscles are stretched out. So we're kind of going back to that notion of they're fatigued. They, after birth, have just done the biggest workout of their entire life. They've had to expand, and then they've been contracting to try to push that baby out. Even if you've had surgery, now you're talking about recovery, you're talking about yeah. stitches, you're talking about, oh my goodness, there's a lot. Yeah. And so yeah. the, that recovery time is so important, but there's things you can do during that recovery. Things like connecting with your breath, connecting your deep core muscles to your breath, working on your alignment. And then once you've been cleared 
for more strenuous activity. And running is a strenuous activity. Jogging is strenuous. Anything with impact Mm -hmm. that's going to take your pelvic floor as the last frontier of everything inside of you and make it go like this. Yeah. It's going to be strenuous. So you've got to give those muscles every chance possible to come back. You know, if they've been here holding a baby to come back to being supple and firm and strong again. And we provide a lot of resources on fit to be. We have a pelvic floor connections video. We have Mula Banda. We have awesome prenatal and postnatal routines. Um, But we do refer out for rehab and they do some really amazing things in personalized rehab sessions where they literally remind your pelvic floor of how to handle impact again. Because even that 15 minutes that Chris, you've been talking about, which is great. Like once somebody is ready to return to running, that's an awesome spot. But prehab, rehab wise, um, like literally standing in place and doing like a little tiny boop. Think about how you hold your baby. And I think it's instinctive. I really do. I was watching a mom with her new baby the other day and she was kind of swaying back and forth and kind of doing this bouncing thing, you know, that moms do. And I thought, oh my goodness, she's right in that moment. If she had been standing in a little bit better alignment (laughs) and, you know, connecting with her breath, that would have been rehab. That would have been amazing baby steps, little tiny bounces to reintegrate the strength of her core, building it back toward being able to handle impact and a good physical therapist um, and the right movements and exercises and breath connection can really get you on the road again faster. So I don't want you to stop running. If you love running, I want to get you back into it. Yeah. So let me see if I can summarize what you're saying. So we got a person who's, <clears throat> they want to get into running. They've had a baby recently. Mm-hmm. What you would tell them is a couple of things. First of all, it's totally possible. Yes. We want to get you out there. Don't be discouraged. Don't rush into it and take baby steps and make sure that you're ready before mm-hmm. you get into that. Right. How can they know if they're ready? Oh, such a good question. So, um, oh, I think the most obvious one is that if, if you go out for a jog or you go out for a walk or you do any workout and you feel any kind of heaviness in your pelvis, okay, you feel like things are just too low and bulgy. Um, and if you do have any leaking during the workout or even in the few days after, um, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, after we have babies for the first six to eight weeks, there can be some discharge and Chris, he's had four kids. He's a good lady. So don't be embarrassed. <laughs> uh, he's, he's been there, done that. Um, that is normal. And you may even see a slight uptick in, in that, that kind of discharge because the uterus is clamping down. You're stimulating the core. It massages the uterus. That is normal. We, we don't want big, big rushes, obviously of blood that that's something to talk to your doctor about, but, um, it's, it's beneficial that core breathing to help clean things out. But if you're doing something and you see urinary leakage or fecal incontinence um, during or even after in the few days, because sometimes fatigue doesn't show up until later. You know, you wake up in the night three times and you're fine dealing with your baby, but then it's the next day that you're like, I can't even, I can't even lift my head. Your muscles are the same way. So you deal with it fine during the incident, but then later you're fatigued. Later you have problems. That is your big, huge red flag that you did too much. And that that is when it's discouraging because um, it, we want our bodies to work. And when they don't, it really sucks. Especially if you've been a runner and you thought you were going to be able to get back in and you did what in your mind is a small workout. And then you realize I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready for this. Yeah. And I have a personal story. Um, and I don't think it's too TMI. Nothing's TMI on fit to be. We talk about all the things in our forum. Um, but so I, you know, every now and then I'll get a, a bee in my bonnet to lift heavier weights than I have at home. And I, I like to do that about once a year. I'll go join a gym for a couple months where I get all the machines and just go through. And it also keeps me sharp as a fitness professional. Well, I joined this little local gym and they had these really great boxes for jumping on it. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. And I was doing this, the jump and then the pull up and then the jump back down. And I felt fine. And I did two sets of 15. And for the next two weeks, I was having troubles, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I was talking to Kelly of the tummy team. She is my physical therapist when it comes to core and pelvic health. And I send a lot of people to her. Um, And I just mentioned, I was like, man, I just don't know. And she goes, what did you do differently recently? And I was like, I don't know. I just do fitness things. (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. But that, oh, wait, wait, oh, wait. I did yeah. do the box jumps. And we were driving, and she, like, looks at me. I think, I mean, I think she might have swerved a little bit. She's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> did you, do you not practice what you preach? How many did you do? And I was like, oh, just two sets of 15. She's like, that is a lot. That, that's where you started? Come on. And it's like, we have our own blind spot. So I went back to the gym, and I backed off. And I did two sets of 10. Still had trouble. <laughs> Nothing major. It wasn't as bad. It was, you know, just little, just little, little issues. And, um, gosh, that was very humbling. So then, okay, fine. I go back again and I'm not going to give up. Right. I do. I do one set of eight and everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Next time I go in, I do two sets of eight. Everything's fine. So I do two sets of eight for a while. And then I do two sets of 10. Everything's not fine. So I do one set of eight, one set of 10. It's like, so you, you listen and you tune in and I gradually worked up again to two sets of 12 was my sweet spot. So the thing, the, the main thing here is you were, you forced yourself, even if you had to have someone else hold you accountable to pay attention to your body. Right. Mm-hmm. That's really the thing. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't do is they don't pay attention to they don't listen to their body in the ways that they should. Or they're directly told. They're directly or told. they're directly told. That's there, there was recently something shared um, by Brianna Battles. Um, she is a CrossFit guru down in California. Oh, my goodness. If you're a CrossFitter, you really need to reach out to her. Um, she is diastasis pelvic floor queen in that department. And she shared um, this picture of something that one of her clients took at their gym that was like the do the goods and bads of CrossFit and, and weightlifting. And on once I was like, yeah, you're fine. If, if you leave a puddle underneath yourself and it's fine if you do, and it's fine. And, and she was like, <clears throat> she's a little spicy. She was like WTF, you know, like, I mean, what, what in the world is going on here? How is this okay? Like they're literally telling people this is fine. And so, you know, and we on hood to coast, Chris, you know, you've run it. And I've done Portland to coast. They're in diapers. People mm-hmm. are in diapers mm-hmm. so that they can keep running through incontinence. It's pretty. You would not believe that, but it's actually true. Like it's yeah, that's nuts. I have friends. I have friends who do this, and and they. I'm like, okay, there, there's there's rehab for that. Yeah, but I really just need to do this next event, and I'll, I'll just get through this next event, and and then I'll do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. I think people need to be given permission to go slow sometimes. Yeah. It really runs counter, um, counter to, uh, you know, we tend to think of guys as being, you know, Oh, they push through and uh, women can be just as much. Um, we call it the female athlete brain. I think that that was also coined by Brianna battles. Um, she, you know, it's a real thing. And if anything, we're pushing really hard sometimes trying to break through stigmas and all that, all that jazz. And we don't need to, we can take six weeks and do rehab and we will come back stronger. So let's say someone does that. They pay attention. They, they do it right. They, they get themselves into a position where they should start, where they can start um, training again, running. So what does that look like? What, what does that look like? Now they're, they're ready. They really did take the steps. You know, what, what does that look like? Um, from my clients and their feedback, and as I work with them, um, the most common success story, um, the, the thing I've noticed and I've tuned into and latched onto in, in their adaptations is, again, they start small. They start with um, a mile and maybe they'll spread that mile over three miles. So they'll walk for a half mile and they'll jog Mm -hmm. or a quarter mile, you know, and they're kind of just building into it. Like you said, they might do 15 minutes at a time. It's really hard on their minds, but what they're doing during that time is they're not just out there bopping around. They are focusing on their alignment. Their eyes are on the horizon. They're Mm -hmm. exhaling. They're inhaling. They're Mm -hmm. keeping a gentle engagement. They're watching the position of their pelvis. And this is stuff that they learn through rehab, through our videos on fit to be through their coach, um, through their own mindfulness. So it's not like you're like, okay, you're cleared. Go. Right. It is very mental. And in some ways, and I have heard this over and over too, it is a bigger release. It is even more enjoyable to them because they're really centering and focusing and tuning into their breath. And it becomes an even 
better meditation for them. Right. right. Um, and that is, that is what helps. And, and again, uh, being very observant of the instant something's not feeling right. And, and again, that can be a big bummer when you have to stop. Ooh, ooh, starting to leak, stop. You know, yeah. so stop and just walk. Yeah. Sometimes you got to slow down so you can go faster later Mm -hmm. or you will injure yourself and not be able to go at all. Um, So the key, and this is what I've seen my whole life, but the key that I hear you saying is, is you have to go at an appropriate speed. And that means taking it slow and, and doing it in a way that matches where you are. Right. And you know, for somebody who's a high level athlete, Maybe they run their entire pregnancy and they, they don't have any problems with their pregnancy. That actually was my experience. My first pregnancy, I was fine through the whole thing. Right. I was spin classes, step aerobics, lots of jumping around, lots of, I, and I was still doing crunches back then for my first pregnancy because I didn't know. And um, I had some diastases, but I was like, eh, it's normal, eh, whatever. I didn't have problems until I resumed exercise again. And then those tired, stretched out muscles, right. or what the problem was a bit like where I resumed though, was at a really high level again, I didn't really back off. And so it's like, right. if you're at a level 10 backing down to a level five or six, if you're at a level five or six backing down to a level two or right. three, you're going to be able to get back up and <laughs> anything go even further. Cause you right. learn so much about your body. Right. And you can go faster as long as you do it. You can go faster in the end if you mm-hmm. go slower in the beginning at the right spot. And that's the same thing that I would say if someone wanted to get real serious. Let's say someone wants to fulfill their bucket list dream of running a marathon. There are You can go online. You can find tons of training regimens to be re- marathon ready in three months, even six months. Those are things you should totally avoid. <laughs> I mean, unless you're already a, a, a high, like an experienced runner, okay, mm-hmm. that's different. But but there are couch to marathon programs that for six months, and you should just avoid that. That's not reasonable for for yeah. the average person. Th- that kind of training, which I've done many times, that kind of training is more like nine to twelve months or eighteen months kind of training. That's the reality. Yeah. And the thing is, that doesn't sell. You know you. <laughs> Here's an uh, eighteen month program. It doesn't sell, but you know what? You'll really regret it if you if you injure yourself to the point where you're just out altogether. Yeah. Or you just forget sure. it. Just forget it. I mean, people throw out these things like marathons or even half marathons. That a marathon is twenty six miles. That if you're moving at a pretty good pace, that's going to take you well over four hours. Mm-hmm. You just don't that kind of physical. Uh, exertion, you have to spend the time investing to be able to do that. So yeah. just don't start off that way. It doesn't mean you can't do your bucket list dream. Start with the 5K. Mm-hmm. Once you feel really amazing doing a 5K, then do a 10K. Yeah. It, it's like, let's do progression that makes sense. And yeah. there are lots of resources out there that are smart that can help you. There's tons of things on our website that can help you with that. But the, the main point is, there's two main points that Beth's been talking about. One is you have to be in tune with your body. If you're not in tune with your body, you're going to injure yourself. You're just not even going to realize it. You're going to injure yourself. And you've got to go at an appropriate speed. And for, for the 21-year-old that's never had a baby, that's a different speed than the 30-year-old that's had many babies. Yes. It's, it's just different. And you should not feel bad about it. It's yeah. And, and you shouldn't feel bad about tossing out a program because – I think that is why I myself kind of resist writing these set programs. There are quite a few fitness people on the market who are in the same niche as I am with diastases and pelvic floor that have these set programs. And those are great programs. They reach a lot of people. But I tend to attract, um, you know, like attracts like women like myself that um, we, just, we just don't read, we don't read the books. We throw out the programs. Um, just get, look, give me, give me a guideline. Tell me what workouts to do, but I'm going to do them when I want to do them. And if I want to do that one five times in a row before I move on to the next one, I'm going to do that. And I want to give people that freedom. So look, we have our foundational routines, go yeah. through them, spend a week with them, spend five weeks with them. Do right. what you need to do. And then, oh, look, we have this beginning pathway. Okay, now, ideally, you could finish this in five or six weeks. But please, 
If you get knocked off track, repeat a week. There's not this like, do it now or you stink and you're a failure. I don't even have to say that. Nobody's saying that, but that's what we feel like. That's what we feel. Yeah. And then we get all off track. And then we feel like we have to start over. We feel like I'm back to zero. I fell, I fell off the wagon. I exercised for 30 days straight. I did this 30 day program and then the program ends right. and then they're rudderless and they're, they're not sure where to go. And so they don't go anywhere. And that's why virtually everyone gives up. I mean, it's, it's this true because you get to that spot and you're beating yourself up and you're discouraged. So you give up, you give up. Yep. And that's a shame because how much better would it be to just step back one week and then keep going? Yeah. I yeah, mean, exactly. It's like that. It's like, well, of course that's better, but that's really the difference. It really mm-hmm. is. There's no reason to kill yourself off. Right. Okay, and so, so, so yeah, like, like I know, I know where you're going. It's like, so if you have quote unquote fallen off the wagon and running yeah, or you've just been in a life season, which is how I like to refer to it of, uh, being in a place where running was not doable for you. It didn't fit you right now, but now you're ready to reapproach it. That's what this podcast has been all about. Yep. And I think that um, th- this, the, the most important things to remember are be in tune and don't beat yourself up and go slow. Yeah. And if you do that. You'll be able to go faster in the long term. You'll be now, able to go farther and faster. No, wait. Okay, hold on. You've been drinking a lot of stuff over there. we got to talk about what you've been drinking. I've got water. <laughs> the, the gallon jug. <laughs> I've got more water. I've got my coffee. i got uh, seltzer water. Mm-hmm. I've got this. Is that beer? This is Are you kombucha. drinking beer on my show? This is kombucha right here. Oh, yes. Good stuff. Super good. That's good stuff. Made, made right here in Bend, Oregon. That's what that uh, is. Wait, what kind of kombucha is that? That's booch. This, this is actually called, I think, Clear Mine from BDK, I think. Um, Super good. Does it help you walk on water? There's like two or three fairly big brands now that are all made here in Central Oregon, which is just wonderful. I have tried to make kombucha myself, and it turned out fairly well. It was, it was pretty boochy. I wanted it to be a bit more fizzy. I, I grow amazing scobies that get very vinegary. My my wheelhouse is water kefir. But that's another show. We'll have to do that's, the one about whole show. That's a whole show. And if you yes. guys don't know what that is, you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You need to subscribe to our podcast. And you need to listen to every single one because eventually we're going to do a whole podcast on fermented drinks of sorts that Bethany is – They're good for your belly. Kitchen. Yes. Um, Cause that would be, <laughs> yes, um, it's going to be awesome. But anyway, so um, I think this has been good. I think yeah. that um, I think a good, you know, some of the good takeaways that we keep talking about are good. I think that also one takeaway is you can run uh, at fit to be. We're not against running. We're against injuring yourself. Exactly. Um, we're against not being educated on what you're doing to yourself. Right. And, um, and so I think that's important. There's a lot of uh, different physical activities and exercises that can be dangerous. And if done right, they can be amazing for you. Yeah. So, um, I, I, again, I feel like every podcast we're talking about this, you got to educate yourself. Um, and that doesn't mean just doing a Google search and trusting the, you know, the, the sexiest article that comes at the top. It means yeah. really paying attention to the source that you're reading from. Mm-hmm. Um, shameless plug for our site. Cause it's full of resources. Go to fit to uh, F I T the number two, the letter B.com. We have tons of resources about this kind of stuff mm-hmm. about getting going again. Beth has spent a lot of time researching different approaches to things like this. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of resources there. Um, like she mentioned, we do have uh, an interval training audio track. It's pretty sweet. You can download it. And it just kind of coaches you through doing intervals. And you can use it, like I said, you can use it for biking, walking, running, skateboarding, like swimming. It doesn't matter. It's a cardio style track. Um, I designed it around the idea of running, but it can be used for anything. Um, And we're making more of those. So check out those resources. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this podcast. Check us out because we're always talking about cool stuff. Reach out to us on our website. 
tell us what you want out of these podcasts. Tell us the mm-hmm. stuff, the questions that you have. We love that stuff. We'll, we might answer you directly. We might cover it on YouTube. We might dig into the podcast. Uh, anything else, Beth, on running that you want to just sign off? I know you're getting into it now and you're going to become a runner and all of that because <laughs> you love it. You know what? If I do, I will take a picture and we can. We will have to add it to this. It will be evidence. Uh, (laughs) all right nope i think that's it i think we got it all right see you guys next time on the next podcast